Have you wondered how to set up a map on Bubble.io? Well, if that question has been in your mind, then this is the video for you to determine how would you set up something uh, like this very common example, Airbnb, where you've got a bunch of pins on a map, and uh, how do you go about doing that in Bubble? Well, Bubble, right out of the box, here under Visual Elements, here at this back end on our Design tab, uh, there is this map element, and we can just grab it, draw in um, a map, and what we'll discuss in this video is the settings here and then also the data. So maybe you have garage sales, maybe you have uh, uh, boats that are for sale or whatever whatever it is. Um, in this one, we're going to use specialty food items that you could maybe only get at some particular place. And um, that's what we're gonna put onto a map. So um, let's before we do that, let's just take a look at our map and what settings are offered here. Our number of markers, we're going to go with a list because we want something that's, you know, like this, a bunch of different pins, whatever is basically available in this view, viewed area will show up and that's what we want. Uh, type of markers, we're going to have geographic addresses. And then let's go ahead and just uh, get some responsive settings up. So, so what I'll show off here is that as you're building this uh, and learning about the map elements, perhaps it's a good time for a refresher or a first time you're seeing how to set up something where, uh, let's go with five for roundness on the corners. And so you'll see something where uh, it's going to be set up for responsive. So we got this maximum width of 200% based upon our, our 320. Um, with, and then our tablets were around like 640-ish in the desktop, that would be three times this, but um, we won't go that far in this video. So, okay, so we've got some other settings in here and we're not gonna dive into those until we've got this data source set up. And to have the data source set up, we obviously need to browse over to our data tab and get that set up. So what I wanna do here is I want to create a type of items in our database called specialty food. And so we'll create that and then under specialty food, we'll just say that they have a title Everything gets a title, right? And that is of type text. We'll say it has a photo, and that is of type image, and then we'll say that it has a location. So where can we get this delicious food? And that is an important point here. This field type is geographic address. That is so the database knows that uh, this is what we're dealing with here, and it hooks into Google Maps API, uh, so everything works nice and um, smooth. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and add some items to our database. What I'm gonna do is I am going to grab some fruit And the location, so the syntax that you want to use here is something along the lines of city, state, and then country. And I know that this works in the US. If you are outside of the US, perhaps uh, you may need to play with it and tweak it. And then sometimes there is a little thing. When you're entering locations here from the back end of Bubble, note that it might not always save exactly the first time, um, probably. I don't know, less than 10% of the time it does that, but I'm glad it does show that up so that at least you can be aware that if you are following this, following along and when you're setting something up to be able to test it, it's likely, so when it's actually live, it's likely that you know users on your platform will be like, hey, it's here, and then they'll choose a spot on a map um, and or a spot you know from a dropdown that is pulled out of the API in Google, and then that way ensures that you have a proper location here in this location field, but, um, that is just something to be aware of when entering locations from the database side of things. Okay, so we're getting our list of food items set up here. And we'll say that this one is over in Lake Tahoe. And sometimes you'll see that Bubble will recognize this and it'll make a little update to it and change it where it's at. And we'll say that this one is in Moab, different state. And it looks like it's trying to go and look this up. Okay, because see there, it uh, took a while to do something and then that zip code appeared. So again, just something to be aware of. Call this one uh, a whatever melon. And there we go. Okay, so we've got four places. And now over in our design tab, we can actually say for our data source, go and look for whatever it is the thing. So if you have garage sale listings as your data type or boats or uh, what have you, farmer's market, something or other. Basically, you want to go and do a search for those lists. Oh yeah, this is a great moment to say, let's say you were looking for like users, like this was a friend-based app and your friends had their geographic location on some live location or, or something, or everyone's converging on, on the party or something, and you only want to see people so you could say, oh, I want it where uh, the, the location is within, and then notice how this sets, sets things up, like current users uh, location, um, 
No. So actually, this takes those. This takes a number here, five kilometers or miles, depending on what country you're in, of um, some other particular location, for example. So you can set up uh, filters so that only certain types of people, if you perhaps you offered a, a slider uh, as a filter on your setup, uh, that's how you do that. Okay, so then you want to go, after you're doing that search and you found the filters and you've got this list of things, then you want to grab each item's location. So that will get it onto the map. And then here, we're just going to go ahead and preview this to see how it looks so far. And then we're going to add another piece of functionality, a little search box so that we can actually search things. So, oh yeah, and I'm going to just do something here to run this as a test user. And, and then what we're going to do, if you are in Google Chrome, right click and click inspect and then you probably will get something like this, but just go ahead and uh, change it on this three dots vertical thing to a docket out here, and then make sure that this mobile device is, connect is selected here in this corner, and that's how you get this set up. And I'm just gonna remove this from the bottom. Okay, and then if you don't see this uh, device frame, this is how you show that, because basically uh, in the mobile world, the iPhone SE is going to be our smallest screen, and then we kind of let it expand up from there. Uh, so, okay, now back on our design thing, uh, we can, oh yeah, just to point out that here's the default behavior. When you have, whether you have four items like this or you have 100 items, what the map is going to do, the map is going to create a view where everything that is on your list is in view. But sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes, you know, you don't care if you're looking for a garage sale um, on the other side of the country. So over here under input forms, we're going to grab a search box and then drop that in. We're going to put it at position of 25, get a 55 here for the height, um, remove the styling. And what I want to do here is just say, where do you want to search to prompt someone? And then we're going to say geographic places. And then we're just going to add a nice little design element up here, up top, this group. Group A, remove the styling, knock it down to zero, 00, put it at 320, and 5 looks pretty good for a height. And what we'll do for this is we'll give it a background style of a flat color. Let's go with some kind of blue. That looks good to me. Well, that's really like neonish. Something a little bit more, yeah. How about that? Okay, and then I'm going to take the same one, and when this search box is focused, I'm going to say, hey, turn that one the same blue. So just a nice, some nice little styling tips to go along with uh, the functionality here. Okay, so now we've got this search box. Great. Uh, it's not functional because we haven't connected it up yet, but you can see this uh, outline lines up to that same blue color. Uh, but So back to our story on our settings area. Well, one of the things that we can say is that we can have the map centered and zoomed manually around a particular location. Well, what location is that, we might ask? It is the value of that search box. So if this search box is going to be Lake Tahoe, we can see, boom, there it did that. And then if you want to mess with this initial zoom, we'll go back to Lake Tahoe and see how this zoom is way zoomed out. We, it centered us on it at this four, um, but then and then when we were at ten, we were super zoomed in. I personally like six, is what um, I've just found to be uh, like a pretty reasonable in between thing. Uh, but again, it depends on if someone is willing to drive really far or if uh, so. It actually depends on your use case. So perhaps like someone's buying a car and they're willing to drive fifty miles for a uh, you know a better deal, but maybe not fifty miles just for a garage sale or something. So see how this zooms into um, kind of like a state level. So play with that as you will. And then uh, that's that's really it, uh, except for one final thing. We'll show off how to do a custom icon here. And we'll just do a quick upload. Grab a map pin. So the trick here is to have a uh, icon that is a PNG, transparent PNG. And then we can see here, OK, so we've got something a little bit more specialized for our map pins there than the default ones, which gives it a nice look and feel and kind of separates the design and style of your app from all the rest of the ones out there. So hope that you found this one helpful. If you have, like or subscribe, really appreciate it, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.